This is White Plains Week, the weekly roundup of White Plains, Westchester, and world news with John Bailey, editor and publisher of the daily internet newspaper, White Plains Citizen Net Reporter, WPCNR.com. Jim Benneroff, editor and publisher of SuburbanStreet.com and WhitePlains.com. White Plains Week, what's happening, who are the newsmakers, what's in store for the future. The views and opinions expressed on this program are solely those of the participants. White Plains Week is presented on Optimum Cable Channel 76, Verizon Fios Channel 45, and on the internet at whiteplainsweek.com, youtube.com, and wpcommunitymedia.org. Now, White Plains Week. Good evening, Mr. and Mrs. White Plains, Westchester and the world. John Bailey, the old citizen reporter with Jim Benneroff, the dean of White Plains Journalism. And Jim has the headlines. And here are the headlines for the week of October 4th, 2019. Autumn arrives in White Plains. Mary Ann Keenan, common councilwoman for 26 years, passes away at 91. Red light camera revenue is a profit to the city and cuts down on accidents. Robert Martin Company looks at investing in health facilities. Bernie Sanders falters. A B-17 vintage bomber crashes in Connecticut, killing 10. Progress on Tarrytown Road, Route 119, reported. And we will, <clears throat> we will show a retrospective of Mary Ann Keenan. Thank you, Jim. And now we go to the White Plains Week video newsreel. And there you see it. That's the way it was last weekend up in the north of Westchester County. The, t the trees were about, the leaves were about hey, maybe 10, 15, 20% turned. So this weekend it should be even better. Autumn is in the air finally after a very warm and humid week. And we're following up on last week's story on the red light camera additions to the city. and. Karen Pasquale of the mayor's office, in response to my questions, told us exactly how much ticket money the uh, violations brought in. And Jim, she told me that in the year since they were installed, a year ago last September, they made $784,000 in ticket uh, fines for running red lights and the way I work that out roughly is that's an estimated 15,680 tickets. Now they anticipate with the addition of the um, nine more cameras at seven intersections 1.35 million by June and that works out to 27,000 tickets. That's like half the population of the city. Not that, they, they probably not be all members of the city because anybody who lives in White Plains knows you don't drive down into the downtown, right? Exactly. So what do you think about that? That's a nice handle. I mean, don't you think? Uh, yeah, it is. Yeah. Uh, you know, I don't know. I'd like to see the statistics on the accident. So would I, yes. Before I... You know, they've made a blanket statement there. Certainly. Well, nobody makes a blanket statement in White Plains. <laughs> That's right. Well, anyway, they did announce, and Tom Soyek, the uh, traffic uh, uh, commissioner, was talking about that on News 12, and he said that the red light cameras saw a 15% reduction in injury crashes and 26% reduction in angle, left turn opposing, and pedestrian um, accidents. These types of crashes are the types targeted by the program. 
the total crashes were reduced by 18 percent. Recent release data analysis from the AAA Foundation showed that red light running is up nationwide, but not in white plains for good reason. And when those nine cameras come in at the intersections, which you can read about on the website WPCNR.com, that's got to go up. I think 1.35 million is conservative. I think it'll hit 2 million, which is nice. I wonder what they'll do with that, folks. Perhaps lower our property taxes. Wouldn't that be nice? But, I, but don't hold your breath. No. <laughs> No, it's, it's basically, what, what do they like to call it? It's general fund money, right? Or maybe it has to spend on more safety, yeah. perhaps. Right? Could, be, could be that. So. But it is good news that it's working, but it's also bad news in a way because we're going to get more. Yeah, I wonder how many non-White Plains residents are getting tickets. That could be easily broken out. That would be an interesting yes. Uh, yes, because they know statistic. where the tickets were mailed to. Yeah. And uh, I'd also like to know the percentage of tickets that were thrown out as not being um, a violation. I mean, but I, they don't want to reveal that because uh, it might encourage cheating, bad habits. Yeah. Know? Well, uh, the other thing is, what's the cost of the system? What's the cost of the system? Well, they, they, I believe it was installed at no cost to the city. And the city, after a certain amount, shares in it. So it's a money maker for the company that installs it. It's a money maker for White Plains, obviously, with that kind of numbers. I mean, I'm shocked, shocked that we are going to get a million three, yeah. you know, for this year. Shocked, but hopeful at the same time that this will turn around the soggy and the soggy sales tax numbers, which continue soggy and soft. <clears throat> I've always wanted weather, a weather forecast for the sales tax receipts. Now, moving on, Mary Ann Keenan, the Common Council woman for 26 years, passed away, and we will be showing video from her. and. Uh, recorded on uh, People to be Heard back in 2016 at the end of this program. Your impressions? Well, Marianne Keenan was probably the best councilwoman that the city ever had, and she was the first councilwoman. Mm -hmm. um, I obviously knew her very well mm -hmm. and attended a I probably attended every council meeting that she was at. And they were can't miss. She was the only, she was the only member of the council that I think attended as many meetings as I did. Mm -hmm. uh, but I think I still hold the record. I don't think okay. anybody will ever. I, I attended more council meetings than anybody else. Yes, else. that is a statistic to be reckoned with. It's a, and. Uh, then we'll stay tuned to, for the rest of the show in, to see Mary Ann Keenan, vintage Mary Ann Keenan, back in 2016. Uh, now, Robert Martin Company looks to investing in health facilities, and they appointed Larry Gottlieb to head up their division. Well, I think they called it science facilities, yeah. didn't yes. they? Uh, bioscience, uh, yeah. people that do health stuff, you know? perhaps for the proletariat. So, so what do you think about this? Well, about I, I think Martin? that uh, the, the market for uh, health space, I think, is pretty good. Mm -hmm. um, I think that uh, the office market itself is soft. This may perk it up for them. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I think that it's a good idea, mm -hmm. and we'll see what happens. Right. Well, again, health care. I mean, if you're getting sick, you need health care. It's right. a growth industry, and uh, unfortunately it is. But, uh, and you've got the aging up population, of which we are, 
and we we count on these facilities being available and easily available, which is what you have to say is quite true about Westchester. We have lots of places we can go. Now, speaking of health, Bernie Sanders faltered this week. And faltered. Faltered. Faltered? Faltered. Faltered. Okay. Faltered. Okay. Well. And you did an editorial about that yes. recently. I talked about in my editorial that we have got to discuss age. Mm -hmm. um, and I said that the odds of them, of the three candidates that were all in their 70s, uh, of them dying or developing an incapacitating illness during their term in office is very high. Mm -hmm. Additionally, the normal aging process will also take its toll. There's a heck of a lot of stress, not only in campaigning for president, but in being the president. Uh, and people in and Bernie Sanders is the oldest of the group. Uh, they say he's going to be back at the debate uh, in mid-October. Mm -hmm. uh, I think he's now r literally a high-risk candidate. Um, and, you know, uh, I guess it's hurtful to say that you're too old to do something, mm -hmm. but um, you got to recognize your age, and we have to recognize that in you know in putting out people for doing responsible jobs. Yes, so, the persons responsible for nominating people for offices have to take into account the ability to do the job for the amount of terms, the, the, what the job involves, not as much stress in the House or the Senate, but, right. but in the leadership positions, cabinet. Um, and executive uh, positions. Uh, uh, that is tough work. Yes. Tough work. Even if you may not know anything about it, it's still tough work. Yeah. Yes. That's true. But um, anyway, so we hope Mr. Sanders uh, handles the debate well, but we will not know because that will be against the highly anticipated League of Women Voters um, Candidates Forum, um, also on October 15th. Um, Isn't there? The 15th, yeah, I, I, well, 15th. I just read that release. I, yeah. I don't remember the yes, exact date. But yeah. That will be coming up, and uh, it's your only chance to really see the candidates speaking out because nothing has been happening. This has been one of the most lackluster, quiet campaigns I've ever seen. Yeah, I don't know why they're holding the forum at the Church Street School. Yeah, well, perhaps it's a bigger uh, venue. Yeah. Although that the women's club uh, is pretty big in itself, where they used to hold it. And uh, so that's something to check on, um, and uh, we shall see. Now, there was an airplane crash in Connecticut yesterday, and this is the grisly shot of it coming up. A B-17 vintage bomber built in 1944, which did not see military service because the war ended. That is flown by the Collins Foundation, which um, maintains the planes and flies them around the country as a heritage thing. The um, um, plane took off and shortly after takeoff developed engine trouble and crashed killing 10 persons aboard. After, and the was that NTS, every, what? Was that everybody that was on board or? No, I think there were three three others that were. Uh, Survivors. Or, yeah. I, and. Uh, the, uh, it's just a shame. This is we have been to see them at Westchester County Airport. They're wonderful planes. They they look. They're really they're loud when they fly over. You just have to you hear those Lockheed engines roaring. I mean, you can imagine 
what they sounded like on in the air when they're 40 planes or so on a sorties. But anyway, we are sorry to see that. And now, last night on uh, Thursday night over at the Terrytown Village Hall, they held a meeting on the progress that the uh, study commission is doing on improving 119 across the county. That's Terrytown Road from Route 9 over into White Plains. And what we learned was they have made become more conservative and um, they have moved the bicycle paths off the main roadway, which was an original proposal, and they have put them along the side of the roadway and they will be eclipsing lanes in six section, sections and removing some lanes and uh, um, this is what they plan to do to the approach to White Plains. Next slide please, there we are. And over to the, uh, this is the um, entrance from um, going in and curving on into the um, uh, Main Street. And the green indicates a crosswalk for bicyclists. The black on the bottom and moving on up is a completely separate, separated bicycle path, which um, <clears throat> is a departure. And as you can see, they have put a median in the middle to sort of dress it up, make it more friendly. And the bus stops are there in a uh, dedicated bus lane, although it isn't too clearly marked. But this is far less um, of a change, at least in this area of 119 than was originally proposed. Now, the whole thing that I drew from this meeting was it is going to be a long while before T Tarrytown Road is fixed, or they actually do these various things that they have planned. And uh, what's next is they are going to submit the plan to the steering committee of the four towns, Tarrytown, Elmsford, uh, White Plains and uh, think and uh, Greenberg, and um, then if those leaders approve, then they will proceed to try and get funding to implement it, i.e., do actual mock-ups using pontoons to block off traffic and see how it flows, uh, which seems very strange to me, but. That's what well, they are th thinking of doing. I think that it's good that they're separating the bicycles. Oh, off I think the road. it's really very intelligent. I, I think th there's been a, recently there's been a lot of uh, bicycle lanes and things added, and adding bicycle lanes in regular traffic, I think, is risky. Um, you know, they really need to be separate from cars. Yes, it's particularly risky when bicyclers ignore reds and just shoot on through, which well, they do. Well, the other thing is that, that bicycles, um, the use of bicycles is great. I mean, it, it's very beneficial. But mm -hmm. there are a lot of people who can't use bicycles. Now, I used to, I, I used to do a lot of bicycling. Mm -hmm. I can't bicycle anymore. I've aged out. Yes. Um, and, um, you know, they've got to think about mm -hmm. how many people actually do it and how many people do it, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, that was one of the um, matters that was brought up during the public speaking section mm -hmm. of the hearing, that they questioned the traffic numbers that, that were listed as how many vehicles use certain sections. But the key, one of the key places is Elmsford, where you have uh, merchants having stores right on the street. Yeah. That will be an interesting 
situation to really look at. And the, Paul Feiner, the s town supervisor at Greenberg, said he was particular. He liked what was being done, and he told me afterwards that he thought they could probably get the connection of the bike trail going down from the Bronx River Trail and the, the, the other county trail hooking together so you could ride on a bicycle all the way down to the bridge and all the way up to the end of the trail, and which is nice, but how many people are going to do that in a snowstorm? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Right. I mean, this is very nice, but I mean, that is the least of our problems. But the what happens to that road and how you smooth it out, remember, there was lots of things they were going to do about that, but that has been curtailed somewhat. Now, we get to a sad part of the program. Uh, we interviewed Mary Ann Keenan, the councilwoman who passed away on September 29th. Um, we interviewed her on People to be Heard on White Plains Television back in June of 2016, three years ago. And um, we asked her a lot about her impressions of what's happening and the difference between the Common Council of her day and the Common Council of today, urban renewal and White Plains future and open government. And here's what she said, vintage, Mary Ann Keenan. Telling you, John and Peter, I could tell how long the meeting would last if there were 42 items on the agenda. The meeting would last 42 minutes. <laughs> 30 items, 30 minutes. Now we have a change in in uh, membership of the council. We go into the 70s, all right, mm -hmm. and we start to have Democratic mayors. And uh, during the days when Al Del Vecchio was the mayor. Mm -hmm. We would have meetings that would run until 11.30, midnight. Consistently, frequently, meetings would last as long as, uh, sometimes we would adjourn till the next morning. Now things have evolved back again, and you can have a 150 item agenda, and the meeting will last 30 minutes. Yes. I've seen it yeah, happen. Yeah. It depends whether the residents of White Plains are interested. That's, it's like, you gotta have both. You gotta have an interested electorate and an open government. And by open, I mean, government isn't closed. If you want to find out, you can go to the library, you can go and look up the council minutes, you can read the consent agenda item by item. But when you come to an item, for example, change in traffic regulations, haven't got a clue. <laughs> what? what? Red change? light cameras. Where, where yeah. are they? Yes, what are they? Like what are they? It's not mentioned because it was all agreed to. Yeah, and specific. Not, not undemocratically, given. it was agreed to legitimately. Yeah. You know, every yeah. member of the council. Now you can say 133 acres was devoted to urban renewal the second largest project in the country. And we leveled the downtown and totally built it up again. We never, we never closed out the agency. We never closed out the project. The urban so renewal the agency. The urban renewal agency so we could bring back projects that we wanted to continue with after we had finished the, the, the broad bottom. You want to say something. Right. Uh, <laughs> the city is now studying development of a good part of the downtown again around the crane station. Oh, yeah. What do you think of how the study is being conducted so far and how the people are being involved? It's endless. I mean, it, 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 well, I, read, I only read yeah. it in the paper, John. Mm -hmm. And it's a, a year and a half study and uh, the state is contributing, what, a 1.5 million yes. dollar study. If I hear the word study one more time, because you see, I'm thinking of FASNI. Six. French American school. The French American. Six mortal years mm -hmm. for a project. 
It, you've got to call it a project. Well, but when you were on the council, though, I, I mean, things weren't rushed through and rubber stamped. If you had questions, I, mean, I remember when they were redoing Alexander's, which now is the Pavilion Mall, you raised all kinds of questions uh, about that c because they, they first said, we're going to put in movie theaters, and then they took out the movie theaters right. and so yep, forth. Yep. So. We did do that. But for some reason, we did it, and it moved. We didn't just sit back and have endless studies and endless pro... I call it procrastination. But what I call it, I call it that because I feel that there are people who don't want to make a decision. Mm -hmm. Now, F FASNI, that Ridge, Ridgeway Country Club, right? That was the name that got sold to FASNI. The city could have bought it. The city could have bought it at one of the lowest interest rates we've ever seen in White Plains. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I cry because it would have been a wonderful thing. It would have been our Lake Isle. Yes. You mean like the like in East, the East yes. Chester Lake Isle yes. Country Club? Yes. But they didn't do it. Well, I'm, I'm wondering about the future in this sense. New Rochelle is planning humongous development. And uh, while I don't like to get into a competitive position, I think we better be very aware of what New Rochelle is doing, whom they want to attract, and what our, popu what our internal population is becoming. I think it's becoming older. I'm not sure that young people, are, maybe they are. Maybe the apartment houses, will, maybe the condos will attract young people. But we have to know what's happening in terms of vacancy and attraction. You gotta do figures, you gotta do studies. I know, you wanna get out of here. <laughs> As usual, Marianne Keenan with the last word, right? It's a, what a personality. Yeah, um, and she was, when we interviewed her, I think she was 88? Yes. She was sharp as heck. Yes. I mean, she was really there. And excellent memory. And she brings up a good point between when under Handy they had very short discussions. Right. Yes. And then with the Delvecchio administration and, and things <coughs> got much oh, yeah. more. We, we used to have, we had two calendars. That was prime time for me. I mean, that was mm -hmm. when I was the height of my newspaper. Um, we had meetings twice a month, sometimes full-blown council meetings, mm -hmm. uh, and I do remember spending many nights mm -hmm. in the council chambers until eleven o'clock, twelve o'clock, yes. even one and two o'clock. Well, I don't remember in two o'clock, but there were some that were one. A hard-working uh, council. Yeah. Yes. Well. That's about it for us this week on White Plains Week. And John Bailey saying we, you will see the entire Marianne Keenan interview next week on People to be Heard. John Bailey, Jim Benaroff, good night for White Plains Week. This has been White Plains Week, news and commentary about White Plains, Westchester, and the world. The views and opinions expressed on this program were solely those of the participants. White Plains Week, produced by White Plains Citizen Net Reporter and presented on Optimum Cable Channel 76 and Verizon Fios Channel 45. You may view White Plains Week anytime on the internet at whiteplainsweek.com, youtube.com, and wpcommunitymedia.org. For White Plains Week, this is Peter Katz speaking.